In this lesson, we're going to look at some problems involving the volume of pyramids and cones. First of all, what makes a pyramid and a cone different from the prism and the cylinder? Well, whereas the prism and the cylinder had two bases that were both parallel and congruent, the pyramid and the cone each have only one base. So that's kind of an important distinction or important difference to make. So the base of a cone is in the shape of a circle. The base of a pyramid is in the shape of a polygon. Now in the case of a regular pyramid, that base would be in the shape of a regular polygon. Notice that the sides or the lateral faces of the pyramid are all going to be made up of uh, triangles. In the case of the regular pyramid, these triangles will all be isosceles. So that's kind of an important distinction to make right off the bat. One base versus two base, regular pyramid has regular polygon for its base. Now the altitude of either a pyramid or a cone is going to be the perpendicular distance between the vertex, which you would probably consider to be the top of the figure, and its base. So for the cone, the altitude is going to be the red line segment that joins the vertex with the base and making a right angle with the base. For the pyramid, again, the red line segment that joins the vertex with the base and making a right angle in the process. So that's the altitude, which is usually represented by H for any of these figures. Now this is not to be confused with the slant height. The slant height is actually the distance from the vertex to any point on the edge of the base as opposed to the center of the base. So the slant height of the cone, again, is going to go down the outside of the cone. And for the pyramid, the slant height of the pyramid would go down the outside of the pyramid. Now slant height is usually represented in formulas by the letter L. So I'm going to go into my picture right now and label my slant height with an L and label my H for height with an H. So now that we know a little bit about the anatomy of these figures, let's talk volume. To find the volume of either the pyramid or the cone, we're going to use the formula volume is equal one-third times capital B, which remember represents the area of the base, times the height of the figure. Now keep in mind that for the cone, the base is a circle. So the circular base, or big B, has area pi r squared. So if I take out capital B and replace it with pi r squared, I end up with volume is equal to one-third times pi r squared times the height. These formulas are both written for you on the reference sheet for math. They're on the left-hand side, kind of down near the bottom. So here's the formula for the cone. Here's the formula for the pyramid. You don't have to memorize either of them. All right, so let's go ahead and look at how we might use this in order to solve some problems. This first example here, they've given us a pyramid. They're telling us that the pyramid is a regular pyramid. Regular meaning that the base is in the shape of a regular polygon. So in this case, our pyramid would be a square pyramid because regular, remember, means all equal sides and all equal angles. And the quadrilateral with all equal sides and all equal angles is the square. They want us to round our answer to the nearest hundredth. So just like with any other formula that I'm going to use in here this year, if I'm going to use the formula, the very first thing that I need to do is put it down on my paper. So volume is equal to one-third times capital B, the area of the base, times H, the height of my pyramid. So now I've got to go find capital B, or the area of the base. Well, we already talked about the base being in the shape of a square. And formula for finding the area of a square is either length times width, or base times height, or side times side, however you want to think about that. In this case, our length and width are identical because it's a square, making the area of that square base 49 square centimeters. So now that I know the area of the base, I'm going to go substitute 49 into the formula 
in place of capital B. And I need to now replace H in the formula with the height of the pyramid. So when I go over to my picture or my diagram, remember the height of the pyramid connects the vertex of the pyramid with the center of the base, forming a right angle. Unfortunately, they have not given me the height of that pyramid. But what I'm going to do is connect that base with a point on the edge that meets the lateral face, forming a right triangle. So if I were to isolate this right triangle, I've got H, or my height of my pyramid, making up one leg. I've got my slant height, or the 11.5, making up the hypotenuse. And the second leg is really going to be half the length of the square, or in other words, half of 7, which is 3.5. And this is really useful to me because now I've got a right triangle where I know two out of the three sides. I can simply use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of the third side. And whenever you know slant height but want to find height, you can use Pythagorean theorem. If you know height but need the slant height, you can use Pythagorean theorem. So the Pythagorean theorem is a really nice go-between to kind of transition you from slant height to height or height to slant height. So this becomes h squared plus 12.25 is equal to 132.25. Or in other words, h squared, when I subtract 12.25 from both sides, is 120. And then taking the square root of both sides gives me a height that's equal to the square root of 120. We may be tempted to express this in simplest radical form. However, I'm going to say that in this case it's not really necessary because I'm going to be a little clever about reading ahead. They're asking us to take and to round whatever answer we get to the nearest hundredth. So I know I'm not going to need to simplify that radical unless I really, really, really want to. So now that I know the area of the base and the height, I'm at the last and final step, which is to substitute or plug this into my calculator. So I'm going to go ahead, grab my calculator, and in my calculator I want to do the fraction, one-third. Times the area of my base, which is 49. Times the height, which is the square root of 120. And we want to round that to the nearest hundredth. So to the nearest hundredth, 178.92. I'm going to use the squiggly equals to indicate that that's an approximate or a rounded number. And since volume is always measured in cubic units, this would either be centimeters cubed or cubic centimeters. So there's a nice problem that involves the pyramid. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second example that involves the cone. So this says they're giving us a cone that has an altitude of 25 centimeters and a volume of 675 pi cubic centimeters. Find the radius of the cone. So the first thing that I'm going to do because they don't give us a picture is I'm going to draw one. And I'll start with the circular base. There's the vertex. So there's my nice cone. The altitude, remember altitude is another word for height. So the altitude of this cone is 25 centimeters. And I'm noticing that these units are all the same. So I'm going to go ahead and just represent them numerically as opposed to adding the units in there. And they tell me the volume of this cone is 675 pi. But they don't tell me the slant height. They don't tell me the radius. They're asking me to find the radius. So I'm going to indicate in my picture the radius. I'm going to let x represent the radius of the cone. And notice I'm going to label that in my picture. And I'm going to tell whomever is reading my paper exactly what x represents. Since we're working or looking at volume, I know that I'm going to be working with the volume formula. And if I go to my reference sheet for high school math, I notice that the volume or 
cone is one-third times pi times r squared times h. So that's the formula that I'm going to start by putting on my paper. And then I'm going to substitute into the formula all of the information that I know. I know the volume is 675 pi, so I'm going to replace in that formula the volume with a 675 pi equals one-third times pi. I called my radius x, and h I'm going to replace with a 25. And when I first plug that in there, I'm a little intimidated, I'm a little scared, but I notice that there's a pi on the left side and a pi on the right side. And one thing I can do right off the bat is go ahead and divide both of those by pi, and that makes my equation at least a little bit friendlier looking. I've also got this one-third times 25. And there are a few different options I can think of for dealing with that. I'm going to go ahead and multiply those two together right now. But if you were thinking something different, this is not the only approach to solving this problem. So 25 thirds. So I'm going to say this is going to be equal to 25 thirds times x squared. And now, to undo multiplying by the fraction 25 thirds, I can either divide by the fraction 25 thirds, or I might be a little bit classier and multiply by the reciprocal. And if I multiply by the reciprocal on the right, I need to multiply by the reciprocal on the left. So the right side of this equation is pretty easy. The 3 25ths and the 25 thirds, when I multiply these guys together, I end up with 1 times x squared. And then I've got to multiply the 3 25ths times the 675. So 81. Well, this is looking much better already. So now x squared is equal to 81. To undo squaring x, I'm going to square root it. So x now is equal to 9. So x, remember, represented the radius of my cone, making the radius of my cone 9 centimeters. All right, so I hope I've given you a little bit to think about in this video. As always, I'm going to have you summarize the key takeaways and then see if you can use your newfound knowledge to tackle those questions on the next page.